For those of you that watch the channel regularly, you probably already know that I'm a big Radio Shack and Tandy fan. But today we're talking about a Tandy system that I did not get to use when I was younger, the Tandy 1000. Back in 1983, the Tandy Corporation was busy working on their Tandy 2000, which they had just put out in the marketplace. The Tandy 2000 was their first computer that was MS-DOS compatible, but there was one major issue with it. It was not truly PC compatible, so you couldn't really run IBM PC software on it, and ultimately the Tandy 2000 failed. That's going to be the topic of a different video, but today we're talking about what they called Project August at the time, which was actually the Tandy 1000. Now the Tandy 1000 was designed to be a compatible unit with the IBM PC Junior. Tandy saw an opportunity because PC Junior was really getting into the home computer market, and there were a lot of things that the PC Junior did that were pretty cool for the time. They had three voice sound, they had CGA monitor compatibility, and a lot of other features that weren't available at the time. Tandy took that and ran with it and actually capitalized on the fact that PC Junior had some major flaws, one of which being the price was a little bit high, the other one being that their chiclet keyboard that they came out with originally was kind of a disaster and the Tandy executives very much recognized that. They saw the opportunity to bring out a product which they ultimately called the Tandy 1000. Now this product is unique because it was compatible with the PC Junior, it had three voice sound and it used an 8088 or 8086 processor depending on which version you had and it was compatible compatible with pretty much all of the PC software titles. Not everything, but enough to make it a real contender. The price point was under $1,000 by the time they really got this rolling out in the marketplace, which made it appealing to families, especially because Radio Shack stores were in pretty much every town in the country. So it was an easy sell for them, and it was a great selling computer for Tandy, and hugely popular. Now, during the time that they ran the Tandy 1000, they were, had many different models, and we have a few of them here at the Vintage Geek Museum that we're going to talk about today. Earliest was the original Tandy 1000, and with no suffix or any additional letters on it. This one has the dual floppy drives, and it has their original keyboard design, which was not actually IBM compatible. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. We also have the Tandy C. M2 monitor. This is the enhanced CGA monitor that could have been sold with this particular system. Then we have the Tandy 1000 HX model, which is the all-in-one unit. So they actually made this one, including the keyboard and everything in the physical case. This could be connected to a television or the CGA monitor. Then we have the Tandy 1000 TL model with its CM5 monitor. The uh, TL model was a little bit later, had a few additional features like having Deskmate built into the ROM. And finally, we have the Panasonic branded business partner system that actually is a Tandy 1000 TL2. I thought this was kind of interesting interesting because it is genuinely just a Tandy 1000 with Panasonic branding, so Tandy effectively licensed their product for other brands to sell. So we've got a lot to cover here on Vintage Geek today, and I'm glad that you joined us for the ride. I want to start out by talking about the Tandy 1000 or Tandy 1000A. This was the first model in the Tandy 1000 series. It came with 128K of RAM by default. You could expand that, but I wanted to mention too that the keyboard for this one is the proprietary Tandy design. Now instead of using an IBM X XT compatible keyboard or a Type M. This is their own keyboard design, but there are some aspects of this that were actually borrowed later for the standard IBM designs that we still see today. The function keys across the top are very similar to the standard IBM design later on, and the rest of the layout is very reminiscent of a modern keyboard. The primary difference with this being that the pinout of the connector is actually different, so you can't use just a normal IBM keyboard. It won't fit in the actual physical socket on the machine. But the keys themselves are, you know, have a nice feel. It, it definitely feels like a standard keyboard, and certainly this would have been a huge improvement over the chiclet style that the PC Junior had, and there are some reviews in computer magazines at the time that definitely note that fact and uh, say that Tandy, in some cases, did what the IBM PC Junior better than IBM. We also have the CM2 monitor. Now, this is the high-resolution CGA-type monitor for the Tandy system. Pretty bare bones. You've got two 
five and a quarter inch floppy drives here, your pretty standard floppy disk drives in the system. Now there's only two screws on the front panel that actually hold this on, so it's very easy to service and get access to everything inside. Once those are loosened, you can just slide the front cover off just like this. Inside the machine, we have a typical motherboard design. It has three 8-bit ISA slots that are XT compatible type ISA slots. Now these slots were one of the things that made this a great machine. It was compatible with most PC type cards. The only problem was that because of the actual actual depth of the machine, which is more shallow than a traditional IBM PC, some of the full-length cards wouldn't physically fit into the chassis. So that made it not compatible with everything, but most of the cards at the time were available that would fit into this particular physical arrangement, and it worked out pretty well and having that compatibility was great. Now this particular Tandy 1000, as I mentioned earlier, does have an additional memory expansion card, and that is in the third ISA slot. That's gonna make this particular model a full 256K, which will make it much more able to do standard software packages and so forth. You do have your two standard five and a quarter inch half height drive bays. It's pretty nicely arranged in a kind of separate metal frame. It's got a ribbon cable that goes to both drives and then to the motherboard, as well as the two power connectors. There's a power supply in the rear of the unit. That's a self-contained package unit and probably fairly easy to replace and pull out of the system when you need to. This machine also used the 8088 processor, which runs at 4.77 megahertz. Pretty basic design. It does also have a slot in it for the math coprocessor, it looks like, but this particular unit did not have that installed, much like most of the IBM PCs that I used back in those days. Overall, it's a pretty well assembled unit. It's easy to get to everything, very easy to service. If you need to put cards in and out, you certainly can do so very easily. So the connectors on the back of the Tandy 1000 are pretty basic. You've got your power connector, standard IEC power cord. You've got a connector for the light pen, which was a, an accessory that you could buy. Mainly that was for reading barcodes and things, so if you were using this in a more business environment, you could use it as a barcode reader. There's also the RGBI monitor port. This would be used for the monitor that we have, the CM2 or the CM5. Anything that's CGA compatible, as far as I understand, will work with that 9-pin port. Then you've got the uh, video and audio jacks on the back of the system, and those are your standard RCA outputs. It's a composite video output, so you could use a normal TV-type monitor. That three-voice sound was another feature of the Tandy that uh, they were compatible with the IBM PC Junior and was another loved feature of the system. It also has a standard cooling fan, keep everything cool inside, and given the fact that there's a lot of space inside this case, I'm sure it was fairly easy to keep cool as well. So that's a look at the Tandy 1000A, or the original model. They also made a hard drive version of this model a little bit later on, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that that used the hard drive card approach, where there was a, a small hard drive on one of the ISA cards. I'm not sure, because I don't have that model, but it says that it was available in a 10 or a 20 megabyte configuration, so. It was the same physical configuration, just with the hard drive in it. We have our original Tandy 1000 set up here and ready to try out. For this one, you do need a DOS disk, so I took uh, one of my original IBM DOS disks we had used in testing our PC Junior to try out with this one today. And we're gonna fire it up and see what happens. And we take it to our standard A prompt so we can look and see what we've got. I think for testing purposes today, I'm going to use a boxed copy of a game that we have here. I wanted to find something that was kind of pushing the limits of the capability of the Tandy 1000 for both sound and graphics capability. And I found this boxed copy of Pole Position 2. It's a great arcade classic racing game. It requires 256K and the CGA uh, video adapter, and it does support the Tandy sound. So I thought this would be a good candidate. Plus it's on five and a quarter inch disc, so we can actually load it on this machine. So we're gonna give that a try as our first test of the Tandy 1000. Equipment check reveals color graphics adapter, which is consistent with what we have in this Tandy 1000, so that's good. As a quick note, I did try the Tandy CM2 monitor that we have for this particular computer, and that did not work. It has a vertical hold problem, so I was not able to use that. I'm actually using the CM5 that I affectionately refer to as the racing stripe monitor because it sat in a box for many, many years, so the yellowing on the plastic is only in the part that was not covered by the styrofoam, which gives it an interesting look. Pole position two. All right, so we've got some options here. Looks like uh, we can adjust the joystick and keyboard controls. Press F1 to start and see what, the, see what happens here. Looks like we got a few tracks to choose from. Fuji, Test, Suzuka, and Seaside. Well, let's start with the first one and see what it's like. Prepare to qualify. All right. All right, it's a little bit of a slow start, but we're going, we're going. Pretty responsive, certainly more responsive than that uh, Ford Simulator game we tried <laughs> back in a previous video. It's 
very smooth, not really any lag. Visually, it looks pretty good. This is obviously an early DOS game. Going into high gear. All right, that seems more accurate. Much different game in high gear. Oh no! Go back to low gear here. I ran off the road. Things are getting crazy. At least I've run into other cars now. This is the, the pole position I remember. Oh, I got grid position seven, even with those uh, two crashes. That's not too bad. All right, now we got a full lineup. Prepare to race. Ah! <laughs> Running into other cars is uh, definitely a major problem. Uh, oh man, guy yeah, just ran me down. Extended play, yay! Come on. The time it takes to get going seems a little excessive. Ah, it's really challenging when there's other cars on the track. Just kind of getting that right spot where you can get around someone without having an issue. I'm not even sure what hit me. I guess it was that other car. Oh man, I'm getting murdered out here. Passing bonus. <laughs> All right, well, I mean, I do have the top score still with 50,120, so I guess that's something. But uh, yeah, it's definitely the pole position I remember from the arcade, but it translates very well with the Tandy 1000. Uh, the gameplay is smooth, it uh, responds exactly as you would think it would, and the Tandy 1000 handles it well with the 384K of RAM and the CGA adapter. I'd say this one's a win. Just to further test the capabilities of the Tandy 1000 original model, thought I'd get out another game that we have here that requires 256K. We've got uh, LA Crackdown by Epix. Good morning, something's come up, or rather something illegal's just come in from Hong Kong. It's that synthetic drug Samadai again, and unless you can break up the drug ring, half of Los Angeles will soon be under its pernicious influence. Looks like uh, this is gonna be a job for me, I guess. <laughs> we'll see how this works out. LA Crackdown, 1988. Do I wanna use a joystick? I'm gonna go with yes. What is your name? My name is Vintage. Welcome back, Vintage. I trust your vacation was restful. We have an assignment for you that may prove challenging. It is, in fact, an investigation critical to this department. Your agent will go to the Pacific Shipping Company warehouse in Los Angeles. We have long suspected that this company is importing phony consumer goods, including personal computers from the Far East. We assume that the people involved in this smuggling are dangerous. Help your agent uncover the truth and bring those responsible to justice. Lawrence Gopak. Graduated third out of his class of 63. He is highly qualified in some ninja techniques. Oh, this, this is my guy right here. Oh wow, got a little map of Los Angeles. We can uh, go to somewhere. Let's go somewhere. How about the warehouse? Oh yeah, sweet. Got the van heading out to the warehouse. Looks like we got all the different locations in the warehouse. How about storage one? I can hear footsteps inside. Do you want me to go in? Yeah, of course. What are you doing here? Oh, just looking around. This is private property, beat it. Just get out of here, okay? Let's search. I don't think it's a wise thing to do this at this time. Are you sure? Yeah, let's see if we can uh, get ourselves in trouble. So apparently, uh, I, I took it too far already. It's, <laughs> he's already left. Was that us running? <laughs> well, we did make it to the loading dock. Let's see, how about we search this? Hmm, nothing here. What about the office? I hear breathing in there. Should I go in? Yes? This looks like trouble. What can I do for you? I was looking for a business arrangement. I see. What kind of arrangement did you have in mind? I don't really know. Possibly something in distribution. I see. Well, I'm not really looking for anyone at the moment. Are you sure? Quite sure. All right. Thanks for your time. It's pretty clever how this game does that, though. It actually shows you walking through each room as you're kind of traversing the map. Well, storage, too, doesn't have anybody in it now. Maybe we can search it. Oh, Far East Traders Limited, Hong Kong. Return of 100 Kumquat 3 computers, $8,200. Okay. Yeah, we took a picture. Well, managed to find a piece of evidence, so I think I'm on the right track, I guess. All pictures have been reviewed. Well, now there's nobody in here, so let's give this a search. New distributors list. Rafael Vico, Cicero, Illinois. Samuel Lemon, East Los Angeles, California. And Randall Fowler, Oakland, California. 
Well, this game is definitely involved. It seems pretty fun. I like what they're doing here with the kind of the multifaceted screen layout. You've got the uh, action happening in the upper quadrants, and then you've kind of got maps and other options in the bottom section. Pretty cool, but the Tandy handles it perfectly well. It is a game designed for the IBM PC, and this is a great example of showing its compatibility that it's very much compatible and runs 100% fine. I think this is a great couple of tests for the original Tandy 1000. Well, that's been our look at the Tandy 1000 or the Tandy 1000A. And I will say that uh, I really enjoyed working with the system, so much so that I uh, kind of ran out of time to get to the other systems today. I really want to take a closer look at the Tandy 1000 HX model and the TL model, and we're going to have to save that for the next video here on Vintage Geek, so stay tuned because that's coming soon. In the meantime, if you want to support the channel, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, ding the bell, do all of those great things. You're going to help us out a lot here at Vintage Geek as we grow the collection and the museum. And if you want to support us by getting some great merch from Vintage Geek, we have t-shirts, we have coffee mugs like this great Vintage Geek coffee mug right here. You can get this on the merch store. The link is in the description and we hope that you check it out. And be sure to watch out for the upcoming video on the remainder of the Tandy 1000 products. I'm Aaron and this has been Vintage Geek. Vintage Geek.